You see, from the various um, um, lease arrangements, we put them together, then apply the um, applicable rules, and we be able to get the taxable income. So let's go through it once again. Foxman Enterprises is a resident company that deals in asset leasing. For the year ended 31st December 2020, the company reported the following transactions. One, asset leased in the course of the year. So what we can analyze each transaction at a time, then we determine the taxable income, and we get the total at the end of the question. So this is what we do. So, have a title of the uh, statement you want to prepare. So, the name of the firm is Poxmax Enterprise. So, we write Poxmax. That is question 1B. Poxmax Enterprises. We say taxable income computation then you must also mention the period covered that is for the year ended 31st December 2020 underline the title then make sure you have the currency columns the currency in the equation is shilling have the two columns so we follow the question, we look at each transaction at a time, determine the taxable income, then we put them together. Now, in determining the taxable income of a taxpayer, like this is a company, we have two approaches that we can use depending on the question. One, we have what we call the gross profit approach. Now the gross profit approach is normally used where the question does not provide you with an income statement. So what you do, uh, get the uh, gross uh, profit of the taxpayer, add other taxable incomes, if uh, any, then deduct the allowable expenses that are there. Two, we have the net profit approach. Now, the net profit approach is normally used where the question provides you with an income statement that ends at some net profit or net uh, loss. Now, that would be accounting profit or accounting loss, which is so different from the taxable uh, income. So what we do, therefore, using the net profit approach is to convert the accounting profit or loss into taxable profit. Now, in our case, in this particular question, we do not have an income statement prepared. So then it means we can only use the gross profit approach. So we get the total, taxable, uh, to total income, deduct total allowable expenses, the difference would be our taxable income. So let's start. Assets leased in the course of the year one, we have manufacturing machinery to Pendo Limited at an annual lease cost of 4.2 million shillings. So in other words, Poxmax Limited leased machinery to Pendo Limited for an annual uh, lease of 4.2 million shillings. Now that would be a taxable income in the books of uh, box max Lim enterprises so we write here um, machinery machinery to pendo limited it was 4.2 million shillings because we are carrying three zeros here we shall have four point uh, four two hundred we multiply by one because it was only one lease uh, transaction. So that gives us a total of 4.2 million shillings. Two, we have 10 saloon cars to some tech tours for four months at 40,000 shillings each per month. So we shall write here, saloon cars. Saloon cars to some tech tours. And we, let, we have to get the details. There were 10 saloon cars leased out to some tech tours for four months, each earning 40,000 shillings per month. So we begin 
there are 10 saloon cars leased out for four months, each earning uh, Proxmax Enterprises 40,000 shillings per month. So we work out that quickly. That is uh, 40 by 40 is 1.6 million shillings. That is what we write here. Next we have, at the end of the four months, Samtec Tours returned four saloon cars and renewed the lease for the others for an additional three months at a discounted pay by 10%. So we have to be very keen. Now, Proxmax Enterprises at least out 10 saloon cars to Samtec Tours. Now we are told um, Samtec Tours returned four out of the 10 and continued or rather renewed the lease for the others. So the, how many were the others? We simply do 10 minus 4, that is 6, for an additional 3 months at a discounted pay by 10%. In other words, in the second lease agreement, uh, some tech tours will be given a discount of 90% of the regional um, charges. So we should do it like this. Um, we say saloon cars to some tech to us. So we do 6 by the additional lease period was 3 months. The original uh, lease rental per month was 40,000. But then we are told now they were given a discount of 10%, meaning they are now paying 90% of the original amount. So we work out that we have 6 by 3 by 40 by 90 percent that is 648,000. We write that here. Four, five lorries to Athi Limited at an annual lease of 800,000 shillings per lorry. However, the lease was terminated after nine months after it was discovered that the lorries had serious mechanical problems. So let's understand this. There were five lorries leased out to Athi Limited at an annual lease of 800,000 shillings per lorry, meaning we shall total lease um, rental for the whole year would be five by 800,000 shillings. But then we are told this uh, was terminated after nine months after it was discovered that the lorries had mechanical problems. So we do it like this. We say lorries two. Athi Limited. There were five lorries, each earning 800,000 shillings per annum. And a year, that is 12 months. But then we are told the lease was terminated after nine months. So we um, prorate that to nine months. So we shall multiply by nine out of 12. To work out that, we shall have. 5 by 800 by 9 divided by 12. And that is 3 million shillings. We write that here. Next, um, 6 pickup vehicles to Fahari Limited in Rwanda for 200,000 shillings per month for the whole year. 6 Pick up vehicles to Ferrari Limited in Rwanda for 200,000 shillings per month for the whole year. So we write here pick up, pick up vehicles to Ferrari Limited. Now, this was an export, but because we are told up here this is a resident company, now we know uh, from the concept of tax residence that a resident taxpayer is taxed on their income and from Kenya and from outside Kenya. So as much as this was um, a lease to Rwandese uh, LC, it would still be taxable income on Proxmax Limited. So we shall do 6 by 200 by 12. So we work it out. We'll have 6 by 200 by 12. That is 14.4 million. So we write here 14.4 million. 
Next note, we are told computers to Digitech Limited and an annual lease of 200,000 shillings. So the 200,000 shillings was for the whole year. So we write here computers, computers to uh, Digitech Limited. So it is just 200,000. So we shall do 200,000 by when we are not told 200,000 per month or per month. So that is a total of 200. So up to there, we have taken care of the whole of not one. We move to note two of the question, which says, Foxmax Enterprises incurred the following expenditure in the course of the year. So those uh, will affect our expenses. We shall come back to that. We move to note three, which says, the following additional information was provided. One, a pickup vehicle whose written down value as at 1st January 2020 was for 20,000 shillings was sold upon expiry of lease in 2020 for 580,000 shillings. Now, in taxation of leases, in case of a disposal of an asset by the lesser, we determine the gain or loss on disposal of that asset. Now, how do we do that? We simply compare the written down value of the asset as at the date of disposal with the, the sales proceeds then we get the difference. Now, if the disposal is at a gain, that gain will be a taxable income. If the disposal is at a loss, the loss will be an allowable expense. So let's get this. A pickup vehicle whose written down value was, as at 1st January 2020 was for 20,000 shillings was sold upon expiry of the lease at 580,000 shillings. So what we simply do is Compare 580 with 420, a difference of 160,000 shillings. So it means, in short, the disposal of the asset was at a profit, so that becomes a taxable income. So we write here, profit on disposal of pickup vehicle. We shall have it as 580 minus 420, that is 160,000 shillings. So that would be an income as well. We move to part, um, I mean, information three, bullet two. The written down values of the assets at the beginning of the year are given there. We shall use that to work out capital allowances. Bullet three, the other incomes of Foxmax Enterprises include one, Interest income from Ufanisi deposit taking microfinance of 240,000 shillings net. Net here means after withholding tax has been um, charged. Now, this is interest income. Now, interest income attracts a withholding tax at 15%. Now, if we are told this 240,000 shillings is net, it means it, is, it represents 85% of the total uh, interest income. The other thing we need to note is this, that for a company, we are told this is Poxmax Enterprises, it's a resident company. Now, for a company withholding tax on interest income from a financial institution is not a final tax. So it, what we simply do is to gross the amount given, grossing to mean getting 100% of it, we tax it as a an income, but when determining the tax liability, we shall deduct the withholding tax already paid. So we do it like this, we say, uh, interest income, interest income from Ufanisi, Ufanisi deposit taking microfinance. We simply do, now we are told to 40,000 is net to mean 85%. So we gross it, we get 100 over 85 times 240. We work it out. 100 over 85 times 240 is 282.35. Two 
82.35. We look for any other income, we move to note three bullets, three still. Dividend income from one inch circle of 100,000 shillings net. Net again means after withholding tax has been deducted. Now, this is dividend income and it is from one inch circle. Now, dividend income attracts a withholding tax of 5% on resident uh, taxpayers or resident persons. Now, if you are told 120,000 shillings is net, it means it is at 95%. Now, the other thing we need to note is to be, uh, I mean, the type of dividend that we have. Now, this is dividend from one inch circle. Now, we have three types of dividends for tax purposes. We have what we call exempt dividends, qualifying dividends, and non-qualifying. Um, in brief, exempt dividends are those dividend incomes that do not attracts, uh, attract any tax. Then, so it means they are not taxed at all. Two, we have qualifying dividends. Qualifying dividends are those dividend incomes whose withholding tax is final tax, meaning once they have been subjected to withholding tax, they are not taxed again in the hands of the receiver. Now, qualifying dividends are normally from two sources. One, we have limited companies, and two, we have circles. Then three, the type the third class of dividends, we have what we call non-qualifying dividends, which are dividends whose withholding tax is not final tax. So meaning such dividends are taxed beyond withholding tax. Now this, in our case, is from a circle and it is already net, meaning it is already it has already been subjected to withholding tax. So then, because it is a qualifying dividend, we don't bring it here because qualify, oh, sorry, withholding tax is final tax. So what we do is to leave it out, but make a note under notes and assumptions. By the way, in answering your questions in taxation, in case you don't make use of any item in the question, explain why in the I mean under notes and assumptions. So under our notes and assumptions, we say dividend income from one inch circle is a qualifying dividend, hence withholding tax is final tax. So in short, explain why you are leaving out the item provided. So we don't bring it here, but we give that explanation under notes and assumptions. Still on the same note, we have royalty income of 400,000 shillings net. Net again means here withholding tax has already been deducted. So royalty income on resident person is at the, I mean withholding tax on royalty income on resident person again is at the rate of five percent. So if this is net, it means it is at it rather it represents ninety-five percent. Again, the same treatment for dividend income. For royalty income, again, withholding tax of five percent is final tax. So we don't tax this beyond withholding tax. So again, we leave it out of our computation table, but we give an explanation under notes and assumptions that. Royalty income of 400,000 shillings net is not taxable again because withholding tax of 5% is final tax. So up to there, we have captured all the taxable incomes in the equation. So what we do is to get the sum of all this and call it total income. So we get the sum of all that, 4.2 plus 1.6 plus 648 plus 3,000 plus 1,400 plus 3, I mean 200 plus 160 plus 282.35. That gives a total of 24, uh, 490.35. Now, we are using the gross profit approach to work out the equation. So once we have the total income as this, we move to the next step and say less allowable, allowable expenses. We only consider those expenses that are allowable. So we make use of information two. Let's move back to information two. We are told 
Foxmax Enterprises incurred the following expenditure in the course of the year. One is purchase of manufacturing machine for leasing. Now, a manuf purchase of a manufacturing machine is a capital expenditure. So we can't take the whole of that cost as a, an allowable expense. But then we shall claim what we call a capital allowance. We are going to compute that. So we can't bring six million as an allowable expense here. We shall simply use that to work out the capital allowance. Two, installation costs and repairs of the manufacturing machine before use. Now, for tax purposes, installation costs and any other incident incidental costs incurred on a machinery or an asset before the asset is put into use is capitalized. Capitalized to mean it is added to the cost of the asset to form part of it. So then what we shall do is to add the 240,000 shillings to the 6 million shillings up there. So that we shall talk about total cost of the machine being 6240,000. So we shall use that to work out capital allowance. Three, purchase of two saloon cars each at 2.1 million shillings. Again, that is a capital expenditure which we disallow but we shall allow for capital allowance. We shall work out that. Next is purchase of a lorry of four tons. The same explanation. We shall use that to work out capital allowance. Next, we have administration expenses of 2.4 million shillings. Ad administration expenses are allowable expenses. So then we can bring that here as an allowable expense. So we write here administration expense of 2.4 2.4 million next we have legal expenses of 240,000 shillings out of which 100,000 shillings was in respect of defense of an alleged breach of lease agreement now we have two sets of, uh, of legal expenses we have allowable legal expenses and disallowable legal expenses. So that reminds you to have section 15 and section 16 of IT at your fingertips. So section 15 we know is about allowable expenses. Section 16 is about disallowable expenses. Now, one of the disallowable legal expenses under section 16 of ITA is legal expenses incurred in breach of contract. Now we know it is illegal to breach a contract. And so any legal expenses incurred as a result of a trader or a taxpayer um, being in breach of a contract will be a disallowable expense. So what we do here is simple. Total legal expense, we are told, is 240,000 shillings, out of which 100,000 shillings was in respect of breach of a lease agreement. So we only allow the difference between 240 and 100. So we write here legal expenses. Two forty minus hundred should be one forty. So we take one forty. Next, marketing costs were three hundred thousand shillings, with eighty thousand shillings being for erection of a billboard for advertising. Now this is marketing and advertising expense. Now. Advertising expense can be allowable or disallowable depending on whether the advert is in a permanent form or a temporary form. Now the rule is here. Advertising expenses incurred on permanent adverts like the billboards, the neon signs, the signboard and all that are disallowable. While advertising expenses incurred on temporary adverts like adverts on TV, on radio, newspaper, and all that are allowable. So here, what we do is this. We are told the total marketing and advertising expense were 300,000, but out of that, 80 was for uh, erecting an, a billboard. So what we do is to get the difference between 380, which is 220. So we write here, marketing expense, marketing and advertising expense. Uh, 300 minus 280 is 220. So we take 220. 
That is the end of node two. We move back to node three. Now, we had a number of capital expenditures in node two, but we know for tax purposes, capital expenditures are disallowable, but instead we allow for capital allowance. So we use um, the cost of the capital um, assets acquired to work out capital allowance. So we need to run a working for that. We can do it like this. So the allowable expense is called capital allowance. We write here capital allowance. So we can run a small working one. So we can mark it working one. So we continue with our allowable expenses. So we work out capital allowances. So that will take us to uh, working one. So we need to run a working one. Now, what matters here is to know which asset qualifies for which capital allowance. So let's go back to note two. We are told, note two, bullet one, purchase of a manufacturing machine for leasing. Now, manufacturing machine is for production purposes, and so it will qualify for both ID and wear and tear. But then we know that uh, the qualifying cost for um, wear and tear is the residue from uh, ID. So then we have an asset qualifying for ID. Installation cost, we said, will be capitalized, so we shall add the 240000 to the $6 million given there. Next, we have purchase of two saloon cars. Now, saloon cars will qualify for wear and tear. Next, we have purchase of a lorry of four tons. Again, that will qualify for wear and tear. And then, note three, bullet two, tells us the written down values of the following assets as at 1st January 2020 were as given here. So what we do, we shall use the written down values uh, as the written down was brought down at the, at the beginning of the year. We add the acquisitions, deduct the disposals to arrive at the qualifying cost. We work out working one, that is capital allowance. So we determine which asset qualifies for which capital allowance. So one, we have manufacturing machinery, which will qualify for both ID and uh, wear and tear. So we write here, investment deduction, ID. We arrange it like this. We have the asset, we have the qualifying cost, we have the rate, the amount in shillings, and then the residue or residual value. It means the same thing. So we write here manufacturing machine. Manufacturing machine. So the purchase price was six million. The installation cost was two forty thousand. A total of six million two hundred and forty thousand. ID rate for twenty twenty. You check the table now. In exams, don't assume. Don't um, use the old rates. Simply use the capital allowances table provided in in the front page of the question. So if you look at the table provided. Part B, that is under capital expenditure in card. So part B of the table is about machinery. And the first machinery, as you can see, is machinery used for manufacture. And that is where our machine falls. So the rate, as you can see, is 50% in the year of first use and 25% um, uh, from the second year on reducing balance. So the rate here is 50%. So 50% of... 6.24 million should be 3,120,000. The residue is simply the qualifying cost less the ID amount. So we do 6.24 million and at 3.12 million, we shall still get 3.12 million. 
Because that is the only asset qualifying for ID, we can get total ID. Total ID is simply the total of this column. So we call it total investment deduction. That is 3.12 million. And we are done with that ID. The other assets in the equation qualify for wear and tear. So then we go on and work out where and tier allowance. So for purposes of rent allowance, uh, we know there were many adjustments in the rates, but the, the, the arrangement remains the same. We have class one, class two, class three, and class four. By now, you are expected to know which asset belongs to which class and why. Now, we have the written down values uh, at the beginning of the year. So we are told in note 3, Roman 2, the written down values of the following assets are that 1st January 2020. So one, we have Lori, Laura Loris, Loris of four tons. A lorry of four tons is a heavy up moving machinery, so it belongs to class one. We can carry three zeros for purposes of easy co computation. So class one, that is for the lorries. Number two, we have computers. Computers are office electronic equipment, and so they belong to class two of wear and tear for 20. Next we have motor vehicles. Motor vehicles will be in class three of wear and tear. And then we have furniture, class four of wear and tear, that is 180,000. The next step is to go to the additions. Additions to mean what was acquired during the year. So then we go back to note two. One, we had the machine, the manufacturing machine here. The residue here is 3.12 million shillings. So we write here manufacturing machine. Uh -huh. So machine will belong to class. Or wear and tear. Next, we have purchase of two saloon cars at 2.1 million shillings. So we write here saloon cars. There are two at 2.1, that is 4.2 million shillings. Then we have purchase of a lorry of four tons. So we write here lorry, because it is four tons, it will go to class one. So we write here four million. Lorry of four tons. No, 1.8 million, sorry for that. 1.8 million shillings. That is all for the additions. Then we had a disposal in note three, part one. We are told a pickup whose written down value was for 20 was sold upon expiry of the lease at 580. So that is a disposal. We write here disposal. So we write here pickup. A pickup belongs to class 3. So for purposes of computation of wear and tear allowance, we show disposal at sales proceeds, not at cost, not at rate and down value. So we write here 580. Note for 20. That is all. So we get qualifying cost. Qualifying cost is simply written down value brought down, add the additions, less the disposals, if any. So let's do it. For class 1, 4 million plus 1.8 is 5.8 million. For 20, Stands alone, so we have 420. That is 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.2, 1.
1.2 plus 4.2 minus 580 is 4820. So we write here 4820. That is 180 plus that should be 3300. Then we apply the rates. So again, we go back to our table provided in the front page of the equation. So if you are keen for the new rates, for the new entry allowance rates, um, it is 25% all through except for um, film equipment, sorry, not sorry, uh, except for telecommunication equipment and then furniture and fittings. So what we do here, once we have the qualifying cost, okay, so we can bring the qualifying costs up here. So we can write the classes. We have class one, class two, class three, and class four. So we have qualifying cost. Class one is five, eight. This is four, two, forty, eight, twenty, and thirty three hundred. So we now bring in the allowance. Now when the allowance is simply the class rate multiplied by the qualifying cost. So for class one we shall have five eight hundred by twenty-five percent and that is fourteen fifty. So written down value carried down is the difference between the two. That is forty-three fifty. Class 2 is for 20, still by 25 percent, that is 105, 105 from 420 is 315, class 3, 48, 20 by 25 percent should be 1205, from 48, 20 is 36, 15, 3300 by 10 percent is 330, from 3300 is 2970. So after there we have all our capital allowances. What we do is to make a summary. So we can do a summary like this. make a summary this way. So we write here investment deduction. We take the total we had from our computation which was 3120. Then we now bring in wear and tear allowance. So we can show it per class. So we have class 1 we got 1450 class 2 we have 105 class 3 is 1205 and then class 4 is 330 get the sum of all those 3120 plus 1450 plus 105 plus 12.05 plus 3.30 should be 62.10. 62.10. So that becomes our total capital allowance. So that is the figure we've been looking for. So it, that becomes our allowable expense instead of the capital expenditure. So that is what we write here, 62.10. So up to there, we can now get our total 
allowable expenses. Right from here, we have 2400 plus 140 plus 220 plus 6210, a total of 8970. So we write here, we bring it to the extreme column on the same line as the last expense here, 80. 970. So that is what we deduct from the total income here. So we have 24 for 90.35 minus that. We get 15. 15. 520. 15. 520.3. Five. We double on the line and we call that taxable income. In other words, taxable income is total income minus total allowable expense. So that answers part B, one of the equation. We are told to work out they are just a taxable income or loss and a tax payable. So we have to finish by computing the tax payable. Tax payable is simply the taxable income multiplied by the applicable tax rate. So we work it out like this. So we work out tax liability or tax pain. Tax pain. So we have what you call gross tax liability. Gross tax liability is simply the taxable income that is 15 520. Remember, we are carrying three zeros, so we can now include them 350 times. We are told in note three, the last part, corporate tax rate applicable during the year was 25 percent. So we multiply this by 25 percent. Work it out, multiply 15, 520.35 by 25%. That is 3,880,000. Um, 3,308,000. Sorry, let's do it. Let's take it again, 15, 520, 350 by 25%. That is 3,880,000, 8, 8085, 87.5. But then we had a withholding tax already paid on some income. And that was, um, that was interest income from a financial deposit. The gross amount we got to be 28 times 282, 350. But then the net amount we were given as 240. So the difference between the 240 and the 282.35 uh, becomes the withholding tax. So we say less withholding tax on interest income from Fanisi Fanisi deposit taking microfinance we had two ways of doing it you can simply do it as 282 350 less the net amount given of 240,000, that should be uh, 282,350 minus 240,000, should be 42,350. 42,350. Or you can simply work out 15% of the 282,350, it should give you the same thing. So we deduct that from the gross tax liability. So we say less 3,880,087.5. We should get 
37, 7, 35, 7, 37.50. And this becomes our net tax liability. This is the net tax liability of the company for the year 2020. So that marks the end of question one of the September 2021 sitting. I uh, request you to go through question two. We can have a break in our next session. We shall move to question two and answer it to the end. Thank you. You can also uh, look at the question one more time, revise it, um, I mean, raise your questions or comments where necessary so that we learn more and better. Thank you.